I'm definitely not gonna go this way. This seems safe. Oh my god, that is worse than lava. Hey guys, it's Pat and welcome back to another mod showcase. And today we are gonna take a look at the security craft mod. This mod actually allows you to keep your house completely safe from any intruders. It's really like a multiplayer mod, and yeah, no one is going to be able to break into your house after you see this stuff. Alright, so let's get started. So the first one is a laser block. And the rest before this one is a bunch of stone, a block of redstone, and also a glass pane. And yeah, this thing is actually really helpful, and I'll show you guys exactly how to set it up. So right here. I put down two of them, and they need to be within five blocks of each other to, like, make this laser right here. And when you walk through it, it will set off a redstone signal. So what I did is I connected it to the door, you know, it's like a simple example. So when I walk through this, the door will open. But yeah, you can really do some bad stuff with it, too. Like, I put two over here in a bunch of TNT. You really don't want someone to walk through something then, you know. Bunch of TNT right in their face is definitely the way to go about it. So kind of awesome. You can do a lot of stuff with it. Since it sets off a redstone signal, you definitely have a lot of choices. So just to show you guys how it works, if I put one down right here, and then one over here, all you have to do is set up some type of redstone signal to this, and it will work. It's pretty easy to use. So the next item is the keypad, and this one actually allows you to set like a password on your door, so no one can enter your house unless you want them to. It is definitely pretty cool. So the recipe is a ton of buttons, as you can see right here. And it goes very well with the reinforced iron door. It's an iron door that just can't be broken and can only be taken down by the person who actually put it up. So the recipe is an iron door and a bunch of iron ingots around it. And yeah, this is definitely going to keep your house safe. I actually set something up right over here. And I set the password to 111. So if no one knows that, which is like the worst password ever created. Let's say they typed in 123. Nothing happens. But if I typed in 111... It now opens and yeah right after you place it down it's going to ask you like what you want to set it to so I'll actually grab another one of these and I'll place one down and show you guys but it's pretty simple to set up like if I place this right here right click it ask me what the code I want is so if it's like one two three you just put that in and now you put a door next to this and every time you use it you just type that in and it will work so guys I have switched myself into survival for the next part and I'm probably gonna regret this but you'll see in a second. So we will enter my house once again here. And now, if someone happens to get in here somehow, they figured it out because you typed 111 as your password. I put water right here and I put lava right here. But it is fake lava and fake water. Naturally, someone would go this way, you know. But no, this is even more dangerous than normal water. And the lava is actually safe, which you're going to see right here. If I jump into it, I'm on fire, but I take no damage. So I can actually, like, go through it. So this is fake lava right here. You actually do burn when you get out of it, though, I've noticed. So I'm taking a little damage, but you're fine. Don't jump in the fake water to try to get it to stop, because that is the worst thing you could possibly do in your entire life, which you're going to see in one second. All right, guys, so I let my health go back up, and the fire wore off, and this is kind of the situation someone would be in if they broke into your house. They'd look over here, they'd be like, I'm definitely not going to go this way. This seems safe. Oh, my God, that is worse than lava. And, yeah. It kills you instantly. You can't get out. That is like, I don't know, it's like freaking acid or something. It just like burns you, incinerates you, and you're dead in like a half a second. So guys, if you make it past my trap, I have set up another door with a brand new block next to it. And this one is the key card reader. And the recipe is a bunch of stone and also a hopper. And these are the key cards that go with it. There's a level 1, a level 2, and a level 3. And I can basically set this key card to open at 1, 2, or 3. So if I set it to 1, anyone with 1, 2, or 3 can open it. If I set it to 2, 2 or 3 can open it. And if I set it to 3, only people with the level 3 key card can open it. So it's pretty easy to use. Right now, I have it set to 1 for this. So if I use this, bam, it's opened. So these, I'm going to show you guys how to set up. So this one right here, first time you enter it, it says select the level of security that you want. Only players with a key card with the security level equal to or higher than the level you select will be able to use this key card reader. So I'm going to set this one to 2. And now if I try to use number 1 on it, doesn't open it. It says require security level 2. But if I use 2 or 3, it will open it. 
it's kind of like a cool way to like have like parts of your house you don't want some of your friends to access or anyone to access like my redstone is safely hidden here with level two access and right here what we're gonna do is set this one to three and save and continue so with one can't open it two can't open it but three, I can't, and this is where I've hidden all my diamonds and emeralds. So definitely very cool. You can set up some pretty awesome stuff in your house. So the next item we're going to look at is the iron trap door. And the recipe for that is a bunch of iron surrounding a trap door. So pretty simple. And yeah, this one is basically just a trap door that is powered with redstone. So I set one up right here. Somehow someone gets on your roof. They are going to need some type of redstone signal to open it. And there we go. So pretty simple with that one. So guys, the next item is the door remover. And the recipe for this one is two iron ingots and shears. And only the person who put up the door can actually use this to take it down. So let's say you want to move a door or something. You have one right here, and that's not a good spot at all. All you have to do is right-click, and it says that you destroyed the door and what location it was at. So it can be pretty useful because it's really the only way to get rid of this door. All right, guys, we are on to the code breaker. And the recipe for this one is really freaking expensive. Two diamonds, two gold ingots, two redstone, an emerald, a redstone torch, and even a nether star. And you can probably imagine what this does. If you somehow forgot your password, you can use this to open the door. So don't forget your password, guys. That's why I made mine 111. All you have to do is right-click, and it opens your door. Of course, it is extremely expensive, so you probably want to remember what you set your password to. Because that is pretty ridiculous. So guys, the next one would trick pretty much anyone. That diamond ore right there is actually a trap. It is a mine. I mean, if I saw one in the desert, I'd be like, oh my god, is that a diamond in the desert? Let me grab that real quick here. Oh my god, why would you do that to me? I mean, that is just so rude. Because who's going to not at least go close to it and look at it? Don't expect it to like blow up in your face or something. And yeah, there's actually a bunch of stuff like this. There is um, diamond ore. There's um, cobblestone, stone, dirt, sand. There's even a furnace and also a rail. So all those are going to work pretty much the same. You place them down, and if anyone walks towards them, they're going to get blown up. I mean, imagine doing it with, like, dirt. Like, it looks like there's some dirt on the ground. Anyone's going to walk over that. I mean, I can't even walk over dirt now. It's, it's ridiculous. I mean, come on. Look at that. That was actually pretty awesome, by the way. Only because I'm in creative, though. So yeah, this stuff is pretty dangerous. Sand in the desert, you can't tell the difference. And all of a sudden, you're flying through the air like crazy. One thing I noticed about the furnace is it works a little bit different. You don't just walk next to it and it blows up. You try to use it. You're like, oh man, I really want to smell this stuff. And then you click on it, and bam, it blows up right in your face. Like again, like everything is just blowing up in front of you today. Like all this stuff is so dangerous. And yeah, this works exactly the same, but I'll put some down just to show you. Some cobblestone and some normal stone. And yeah, pretty awesome though. Definitely fun to mess around with people. Unless, of course, you know, it happens to you because then it's terrible. And even rail. Even rail is going to blow up. But not if you walk on it. You actually have to put a minecart on it, which is exactly what you would do. That's what I would do. Um, that's the first thing I tried, actually, right when I used it, when I tried this. Put down the minecart and it explodes. It is so cool, though. I mean, definitely fun to mess around with people. And there's some actual normal mines, too. So I'll show you guys. And I am going to have to switch into survival in a second, though. But a normal one like this, you know, you walk towards it. See, now that I would try to avoid. If I saw that, I would not stand next to it. It looks like a mine. You know, I'm not going to step over it like that. This is terrible. Um, and there's even this one right here, the Bouncing Betty. And this one, same thing pretty much, except it bounces into the air. Like that and then blows up and the recipes for this stuff guys is pretty simple here so the recipe for the mine you know three iron ingots and also gunpowder for the bouncing betty two iron ingots a weighted pressure plate and also gunpowder so for all the other stuff that i showed you it's that item plus a mine right next to it so they're all exactly the same on that um, there is one more thing you could do. This item right here is called the Mine Remote Access Tool and does not have a recipe yet. But what I can do is I can put down, like, you know, some mines around here and then take this and right click and then it, like, bound the mine into my remote. And let me not get too close here. Let me get a little closer for this last one. All right, so they're all bound now. 
if I right click, you see someone like walking by, you can um you can detonate these. Like you see how there's three? Detonated, detonated, detonated. I mean that is pretty cool. So I want to prepare you guys for when someone is screwing around with you. So if you see one of these and you know you're gonna need shears. All you have to do is left click it. Don't right click, it'll blow up in your face. And that's bad. And you need to be in survival to do this, by the way. So let me get a little closer here. I'm too nervous. All right, there we go. And now it will not blow up. And you can actually pick it up if you want to. So definitely useful because you don't really want to get blown up. Um, but if you did put it down and you made this mistake and you're like accidentally right clicking, which <laughs> might happen, right? It blows up in your face and that's very, very bad. But anyways, guys, that's about all there is to show with this mod. It adds in some pretty interesting items for screwing around with your friends, and you can even make your house extremely safe, as you can see right here. If you want to check it out, the download is in the description. And if you enjoyed the review, I'd really appreciate it if you left a like and subscribed. It really does help me out. Thanks for watching. I will see you next time.